may have heard that School of Motion acquired MoGraph Mentor earlier this year. You're gonna see some of this previously behind a paywall content be released and accessible on schoolofmotion.com. So keep checking back here for more. Thanks. We're gonna have a little bit of fun now talking about, you know, bringing some of this keyframing stuff that we're talking about, some of these animation principles, uh, using shape layers, talking a little bit about gradients and what we can do in there, and also introduce this idea of using mats and blending modes to kind of blend shapes together. Another really commonly used way to leverage simple shapes, this kind of 2D design driven work that we're talking so much about here in this class. So let's go ahead and jump into After Effects. Uh, try to create something really beautiful. You're free to freestyle on this, customize this, or just copy it exactly uh, because you want to understand this process. Well, let's go ahead and dive into After Effects and try to make something beautiful. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. And I'm going to take the duration down to about seven seconds because I want this to be pretty short. I'm going to work at 24 frames per second, a classic uh, kind of film frame rate and I will name my composition I Reveal. Now, I wanna focus on two things here. I want really good flow and energy and a feel of kind of like a flourish. Um, so like a bit of a classic ease in, ease out where I'm gonna start a little bit slow and then try to build up to something that looks really cool, which is this I Reveal animation and then try to position all of my layers in a way where I can end up with a really beautiful composition uh, and use these blending modes to create kind of a fun optical illusion. I'm going to basically need to create a, a bunch of ellipses here. And so I'm gonna start in the middle and just go ahead and create a first one. Now I wanna think about the design principle of, of contrast and variety. So I want these to start out at different sizes and different scale. And I'm gonna choose to create multiple shape layers as opposed to putting everything inside of one shape layer, just because this is not gonna be a terribly complex scene. So I think it's gonna be easier just to work uh, at the layer level. So let's go ahead and then and start uh, creating some smaller circles. And I'm gonna hold shift and I'm not gonna worry about the anchor point just yet. Then I'm gonna make sure I click away so that I'm creating a new shape layer. And then I'm gonna create another one at a slightly different scale. Then I'm gonna click away again I still have this tool selected. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna click away again and then create a sixth shape here. And just creating kind of a random layout, we're gonna wanna change this. Um, then I'm gonna select all of my layers over here by clicking up here on layer six, holding down shift and then clicking layer one. Then I'm gonna toggle these closed for the time being. Now, when we're working with blending modes and we're gonna use soft light and difference and we're gonna do all that, the background is gonna matter. So I wanna introduce the background right now. Uh, we can go about that by adding a new solid to the scene and we can control click here again in the sub menu to add a solid or we can come up to the layer menu and say new solid or the keyboard shortcut is Command Y. And when we hit Command Y, it brings up the solid settings menu. And so right now, I actually want a solid that's gonna be 1920 by 1080. It's telling me it wants to make a 1080 by 1080. The shortcut to just fix that is say make comp size. So now it will match perfectly the size of our background. It comes in in this black color, uh, but I wanna add a four color gradient to this so we can get really crazy with gradients. So I'm gonna come up to the effects menu and say generate four color gradient. And this creates a really vibrant four color gradient that gives us an effects panel up here on the top left that we can manipulate you know, the points and the colors. And before I move on from color in the background, I basically think that I just want there to be a generally warmer environment. And you know, some of this can be a little bit more orange or a little bit more, Here, let's pull this one towards orange a bit, and this first yellow one a bit warm as well. So I find the four color gradient useful to create a little bit more of a subtle uh, you know, gradient as opposed to just, just being so crazy. Uh, but when we add a little bit of color grading and contrast touch, it should even you know, ramp up the amount of contrast that we have in this background. Now, so that's just a little bit of my 
uh, approach and how I like to, to go about it. So we have six shapes and I'm gonna want more, but I just wanted to put these first six in just to start messing with the gradients here and seeing what kind of look we can create uh, and how we can kind of blend things together. So the current gradient we have, I'm definitely not uh, gonna keep. So let's go ahead and now and actually create some really a little bit more all over the place, uh, interesting looking gradients. And more importantly, I wanna make sure that I get in here and uh, kind of even out the distribution of these gradients. So I'm just gonna quickly go through, and this is where we can really have some fun and, and be creative here. And something like green to lighter teal. Again, making sure that each of these uh, are distributed. So yeah, we're gonna get really, we're gonna get really wild with it here. And once I've got a, a few base values in, now the, the eyedrop tool can become useful because I'm gonna want there to be a bit of color harmony here. I don't necessarily want it to be uh, too crazy. You know, pink to orange is always pretty amazing. And I can click directly on the shape right here and then click on the fill menu. So this does take a moment, but uh, you know, when crafting the look of the scene, this is definitely, definitely time well spent. And I generally like this blue, you know, cutting against this warmer environment, having this cooler, you know, tone in the foreground, I think it is definitely pretty nice. And I'll make sure this gradient stretched out. And then layer two here, this shape is kind of our last. And come to this gradient fill and make sure that's good to go there. So I've got kind of a fun, interesting mix. Some of my tones look a little bit muted while some other ones are a little bit hot. That may be worth fixing really quickly before I move on. I do want to keep consistent, a consistent value structure. I don't want there to be uh, a value structure all over the place. I think this actually is an important place to, yeah, I think I maybe made that green just a bit hot. And so that feels a little bit more cohesive. Um, a little bit more muted. So now let's talk quickly here about blending modes, and then we'll start to duplicate some of these and build out some of where we're headed. Now we have this button at the very bottom of the menu that says toggle switches and modes. And here in After Effects, there, there's so many sub menus assigned to each layer that literally they give us a button that says toggle the switches, toggle the sub menu and, and options because they didn't want to stack you know, all of these menu options here. They're trying to, to make the interface as user-friendly as possible, but it does create a situation which you've got to know that, you know, on one menu, you've got your, you know, your 3D switch and your motion blur, and then on another menu, it's got your track mats and your modes, uh, your blending modes. And so blending modes, if you're if you're not familiar with it, is is similar to Photoshop where you basically choose ways to blend one layer into another. So like overlay is a really common one and we'll see that then it basically looks, you know, like really low opacity. We could choose something like hard light. So now it just looks a little bit more present there. We could choose something like difference, which actually kind of subtracts uh, from the layers beneath it and creates a blend um, in the difference. So we saw when we selected difference, now it basically subtracted the background behind it and then the, this shape here as well. And that's a good thing to know about blending modes is that it's basically working from the top down. So if we actually change this stack around and we move it all the way to the bottom, now this difference blending mode isn't blending anything because it's, it's, it's below these other layers. If we move it to the very top, now we can basically move this around and see that it's it's doing this uh, kind of subtraction uh, over all of the layers. So layers are working from the bottom down so that the, the way that we stack the layers does matter, but you can instantly see the potential, right? So before we can get into animating our scene, we need to talk about setting up one more piece of artwork. In my original uh, example of the scene, um, uh, let's just go through this layer by layer. So right, so really, what's going on here is I actually uh, created several layers of of kind of feathered shape layers uh, and then a layer of gloss with a white shape layer where the opacity is turned down and even one more specular highlight here for good measure and then each of these additional layers is actually parented 
to this base shape layer. So if we turn them on one by one, as we're watching this animation, we'll see uh, I have a position and a scale animation just on this base shape, and I can see even a little mistake there. Um, but I basically, I'm trying to get that flow, right? A little bit of anticipation, and then it flourishes up into the camera, and then it kind of settles, and then it goes, and then it goes back down. Now let's turn on the second layer. I duplicated that basic uh, first shape layer, uh, changed the gradient, and then simply masked and feathered, and we'll do that here in a moment. Then I went ahead and did it again with kind of a pink gradient, which is set to soft light. Then I did it again with a yellow gradient uh, and rotated that mask a bit. Then I also did it with this kind of glossy shape layer that I created. And because they are parented to the base, and then I'll turn on that last specular highlight, um, it is parented, but each layer also has a duplicate of the scale property. So let's go ahead and build this, uh, but I'll just show you the final result here where this is really gonna help give a kind of floaty exponential scale uh, feeling to this animation that's gonna help us blend in with the other elements. So just to give you a preview, then we have this second element, which is just set to an overlay. Then this top element here. Then we get to our last two circles where we're using the blending modes of exclusion and difference. So let's turn on this layer here. Then that exclusion you see is basically like cutting against the color. So we bring in that cold value uh, against these warmer values. And then where it says difference, that's gonna be our last layer. And you know, a big animation note here is that the flourish is gonna look cooler and more visually interesting if the element that comprises part of the eye starts out really, really small and then gets big on its, on its final pose. So these are a couple of things we need to keep in mind as we're building this out, but let's go ahead and build this base element um, that's gonna allow us to get some of this kind of exponential scale, but I just wanted to show you a preview here. After effects kickstart changed my life. I didn't know anything about the program, and in just two months, I learned everything that I needed to know. From the get-go, we learned the importance of timing and spacing. Getting really thorough training, and not just in the software, but in the thinking. So I'm gonna come back to the scene that we are working on here, and I'm gonna solo this base element um, and try to recreate what we just looked at an example of. And uh, basically I wanna call this my, my main layer, and then I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate it. And now I actually want to mask uh, a bit of this top layer. And just so that we can see the difference in this top layer, let's go ahead and change uh, actually, on these layers, instead of gradients, we can just use basic fill colors because we're going to kind of mask it on as a gradient. So I'll choose kind of a light blue. And now with this ellipse tool selected from the top menu, I've got to make sure that I toggle over to creating a mask as opposed to creating a shape. Um, so if you start to draw it and you're just creating another shape, it's because you need to you need to toggle this switch up here, then I'm gonna create kind of a big circle. Oops. And now that's gonna add a mask to this layer here that I can toggle down these properties and feather this mask. So I just wanna add this blue gradient here. And if we go ahead and solo it, what we end up with is a layer like this, where we have one hard edge and then it just kind of gradiates out and has no opacity whatsoever because the mask is simply drawing it on this way. And so I wanna stack a couple of these cause it's just gonna look really nice when we start to scale up and we do this parenting to see these gradients and these colors uh, pull apart while keeping these edges here. So let's go ahead and make some duplicates of this by hitting Command D. And now an easy way to kind of make this work is simply to hit W on the rotate tool and just change this to another part of the, the base sphere here and add a little bit of a different color maybe a yellow, hit Command D again, hit, hit W to rotate, kind of bring it over to this side and maybe choose something uh, like pink. We can bring on that main layer and it may look a little bit crazy. I'm gonna make one more duplicate and I'm gonna hit M on this layer to bring up the mask path and I'm gonna delete that first mask that we had. 
And then I wanna make this kind of a glossy layer. So I'm gonna choose white. And then I'm gonna come up to this top menu and I'm gonna choose the pen tool. And the keyboard shortcut is G, but I want to bring up the pen tool. And again, make sure that I come and toggle that I'm creating a mask. And so I'm going to basically create two masks here that are both set to subtract. So a mask, when we draw it on, it can either be set to add or subtract. I wanna then create a second one and just create kind of a pinching, glossy, somewhat circular shape. Now, if I want to uh, convert any of these points, I can come back to this pen tool menu and we'll see right here, it says convert vertex. And so could create a little bit more of a Bezier here. We can hit V to come back to our basic selection tool. And if we hit M on this layer, we just need to make sure again that they're both set to subtract. So we end up with something in this kind of lane. Then if we hit T for transparency, it brings up the opacity and we can dial this opacity down a bit. So it just feels uh, kind of like a glossy element, but not, not too much. So now we can do as we said before and, and do a little bit of parenting. So layers two through five here are really all detail layers. And I'm gonna click on this blue box right here. And I'm just gonna change the color so that I know that really this whole batch of layers are just the details of this base layer. Now, if I just close all these, um, basically what I wanna do is parent layers two through five to the main layer. So now if the main layer starts to scale, uh, or starts to move, that that's going to uh, be a child of this main layer. Now, if we go ahead and select all of these and do like we did in the, in the example that we just quickly covered and do a scale animation on all of this, uh, that's where we're gonna start to see that exponential scale. So we know we want this element to kind of flourish on. So I'll go forward to about one second and We'll set keyframes at 100, and we are gonna put keyframes on all of these. Then we'll come here and we'll zero that out. Now we'll have this scale up, and then we'll have it overshoot, but we'll worry about that in the, in the graph editor. And then we'll build some anticipation until it, you know, it starts to scale up all the way until really this element is gonna become the main pupil uh, of the eye. And right now we're, we're still gonna need to worry about uh, blend modes and, and kind of refining the look, but this is gonna be kind of the center point of the animation. We'll go far enough to put the edge of that kind of mask off to the side there. Now at this point, I think we should grab all of our scale keyframes, use the keyframe assistant and say easy ease, just so we can get into our graph editor and right now we're looking at the value graph. And so we need to kind of think about timing and spacing here. And let's think about the fact that, right, we want this to actually kind of come out pretty quickly, just kind of pop onto the screen pretty quickly. And then what we really want here is some, some overshoot and some anticipation and then a really quick flourish, a really quick move. And so by default, this tangent is broken. And so we're gonna to wanna to grab this tangent and do as we did before and convert it to auto Bezier. And now I know that basically if I have this line, right? If I go up above 100% and then it comes back down, now we can start to build some, and some anticipation as this builds up. And then what we really need is for this movement to be really fast. So we need to grab this end piece here and really try to ramp it up. And so this will be our first look at the kind of movement. And I can tell off the bat, it already looks a little bit sluggish. And I'm gonna turn down my resolution to a quarter because when we're animating, we're really just concerned about, you know, getting this right as quickly as possible. And I'm just gonna grab all of them by selecting all the keyframes, which is gonna bring up this bounding box. And I'm gonna shorten the timing on this. Um, and let's see if that feels a little bit snappier. So I should have I should define the end of my work area so we can watch this on loop. And so that still feels a little bit sluggish. We could push this a little bit further uh, here by exaggerating this curve even more and then maybe even allowing for a little bit of overshoot here. And so this curve right here in the center is really what's gonna drive 
uh, the feeling of this here. And so that feels a little bit better. That's a little bit quicker. And I think I'll, one more time, grab my entire animation and just shorten up the timing even a little bit more to get to this pose. Now, the next thing we can do that will add a little bit of visual interest, which is a really common After Effects technique, is just offset this ever so slightly. So, if the main layer is actually a little bit slower than some of these sub-layers, uh, we might get a little bit more of an interesting animation. So let's offset these a bit, and we can just actually do this visually and kind of see what result we get with a quick RAM preview, hitting Control-0. And so it's subtle, obviously, but you know, seeing it come out a little bit differently, I think, improves it ever so slightly and gives us kind of an interesting element that we can build on with, with some of our other shapes here. So I'm gonna unsolo these. I'm gonna turn the background back on. We can see how, yeah, we're getting some kind of nice blending in there. It's really, it's really subtle. Um, but now we need to add this same scale animation that we just did on these other layers and also do some position animation. So this is really where now we can uh, try to be efficient animators and uh, try to really build out the rest of this animation. Now, to save us some time, we're gonna borrow from that main layer scale animation that we just did by selecting the scale, hitting Command C, coming up to the remainder of our layers here, hitting S, and then Command V to scale. So now we've simply copied that animation there, and I can see I also have this shape here, uh, shape layer one, I'll Command V that same scale animation that we already have. And so we get a little bit of free production value, but clearly we're gonna need to uh, adjust the rest of this animation here. And so I'm gonna take this shape layer one and make sure that, you know, that main layer is, um, uh, that that main layer and all of its details are a little bit more towards the bottom. And now we wanna take a look at the scale of the rest of these elements. So we can tell that these, these bigger pieces um, need to be much bigger. But as we saw in the previous example, let's assign, you know, which element here is going to turn into, uh, you know, the, the bottom part of the eye, and it should probably be this layer right here. So let's take a look at layer four and how much it scales, and let's go ahead and scale this way up. And also quickly add a position keyframe, move it back in time, and then go ahead and move our element. So we need even more scale. And basically, I think I just wanna line up with the very top of the title safe and achieve a scale where the midpoint um, is a little bit more towards the, the very bottom of the frame, actually. Let's actually scale this up even more. You know, if at all possible, I can end up with kind of a perfect half circle along the bottom of my composition, I'm going to feel probably better about you know, the design here. So with that animation in there, we can see we're gonna need to uh, also work with the position parameter. So this is really common too in After Effects as you're, you've got some kind of main blocking, but now you need to refine and you're working with one thing at a time. And I understand this can definitely uh, feel like a lot of work to kind of manipulate all these different things. But if you just keep your eye on the bigger picture and just take it one property at a time and be okay with it looking crazy until finally it looks good at the very end. Um, I think that's a pretty common uh, occurrence when it comes to doing work like this. So let's go to the position parameter here and just do a default ease and then kind of see where that gets us. Uh, and it's not quite enough because we need to really push that to match uh, just how dynamic the scale animation is and so We'll just use the velocity graph here and see if we can't just line up when that position really goes. And so it's going way too early. So, you know, that's pretty good for the bottom half of the circle. We might just need to kind of readjust where some of our layers are, some of our layer order. And this is where just literally, you know, pulling this guy under some of these other layers starts to make that feel a little bit more interesting for us. 
we need to now think about what comprises the top half of the eye and what shape is gonna get assigned to that and how we're gonna manually put that in place. And so as we watch our animation here, I actually think it's gonna be most interesting uh, if this small element as well comprises the top half, because I think it's just the most dynamic if the other shapes are moving up slowly to have the smaller elements really make a dramatic move towards the center. Um, so here we want to, again, let's set a first position keyframe and we'll have to go back and, and really massage that, but then we'll uh, go back to scale and make this way bigger. And let's just quickly choose a different mode just to see, and we'll have to play with that, but uh, then we'll come up and start to change the position here. And let's see if we can match. Yeah, so that's too big. I do wanna match generally the kind of half circle that we're getting on the other side. And so you can see, all right, that's, that's getting us pretty close. And of course, that's gonna look a little crazy and that's gonna have to be refined. But while we're here, let's actually put this here. Let's see if we select difference for this one and we come to this layer and choose exclusion. In, in my experimentation, I really think part of it is just playing around and then you know finding the colors that you think are gonna look best. So for example, if we come to uh, shape layer one here and we give it some kind of mode uh, like difference or perhaps just soft lights, um, if we begin to change the underlying gradient color, we're gonna get different results. And so if we you know, change this to something far more saturated and yellow, then it's gonna kind of render as blue there. And then if we choose maybe, you know, a really saturated orange, then that soft light, you know, gets interpreted in that way. And then when you have a layer that's set to something like difference, now we're gonna get dramatically different results if we manipulate uh, this gradient here. So let's come into this gradient and see how, you know, as I begin to toggle through here, it's just gonna dramatically recalculate a kind of different color scheme. And so, you know, we could totally flip that to something there. If we come to the other side of the gradient, right, we could push this towards more of a red orange. That's really interesting there. And then I'm gonna go to layer five here and choose hard light, but I don't really love how that color's looking. So let's uh, change that gradient as well. And this is where really I think it's kind of the fun part, is now you can really dial up uh, some really interesting and kind of complex color schemes here and the way that After Effects will, will blend these together. So we're still, we've still got some work to do, uh, but we can see how the beginning of this is taking shape. We're still gonna need to work on uh, position parameters here and massaging that out, but this is the basics of it. You know, This is basically the structure of building something like this and it's hopefully a really useful exercise in terms of uh, animating something with a lot of layers and blending things together and stacking things and how things stack. Um, if you can get comfortable with this kind of work, um, you know, it's, it's really a really kind of the bulk of, um, of 2D work. So actually the culprit now is the position parameter. Now we need to line up and do some final positioning. We can see, you know, when we have this linear, uh, linear position animation here, we need to ease that and just use something simple like the speed graph to create uh, a really dynamic move on the position, which kind of matches what we're doing with the scale instead of it feeling linear and, and kind of slowing down the animation. Now let's take a look at layer six here, this big element, which is scaling up and it's really uh, a really nice element. We really need to now kind of create a clearer pupil here. So in terms of scale, let's say this guy doesn't scale up quite so much and let's go ahead and now animate the position property here as well. And I'll move a first keyframe so we save its starting point and now I'll just actually scale it right here in the comp and move this right to the center. Uh, I'm gonna go to shape layer five and do a similar process where I quickly, I'll save out that first position keyframe, but then go ahead and move 
this into place here and let's just create our pupil on the fly. Now this element here, you know, it's kind of what we want to do with the, you know, the kind of white of the eye. That's uh, the area around the pupil. And so I'll, I don't want to move it out of its original position. So again, you know, I'll just save its position by laying a keyframe and moving it back in time and then thinking about this final pose. And I know the scale, you know, it's already live. And then you know, as we're going, I think question of how these things blend together. And so this gradient here on shape layer two, if we bring its fill open, this is, you know, clearly change a lot about this look since this is one of the kind of main driving pieces of the animation here. So, you know, as we toggle through the color wheel, we can see how that's, you know, that's blending. So it's actually kind of fun to do something really, really vibrant for this center element which is essentially shape layer six, let's just take a look at, let's take a look at its gradient as well. So it'd be nice to add a little bit of a darker contrast. A pupil should, you know, be somewhat dark. And so maybe something like a deep purple is interesting, uh, which is a nice complement to this green here. You know, we're getting closer. Again, once we add those kind of linear position keyframes, now everything looks, uh, looks pretty bad. But if we just hit P to toggle open, we can visually see here, you know, how quickly we can change this to easy ease. Probably do need to space this out a bit as we saw in the first one. I'm going to shift select uh, just the ones that we added and I'm going to here in the speed graph, make sure that this is pushed and probably safe not to go crazy with it there. And so quick RAM preview shows us, you know, we're getting some interesting colors. We're getting to this, this kind of cool shape. You know, we've got the small elements becoming the big elements. And I think that's working, working pretty nicely as a next step in this. I think it just still feels a little bit sluggish. Actually, I'm going to hit you to bring up the position and the scale properties. And I just want to, I think, make the timing a little bit snappier through the center. So let's grab all these end keyframes and maybe we'll get, you know, a little bit snappier, a little bit more interesting if we just tighten up that initial timing. And yeah, I think, I think that's helping a little bit actually. Now this glossy element here, I think is just too much of a visual distraction that I didn't really uh, intend. I'd just like to take a look at maybe if we change up its blending mode a bit or actually just take its opacity down even a little bit more. So it's a little bit more of a subtle element. I think that timing is feeling a little bit better. Now from here, it really is, you've done a lot of heavy lifting to establish some, some pretty important things about your piece. And now from here, you know, we have position and scale live. So it's really just a matter of now let's work on that third pose and do a little bit of what we just did of work, work on a third pose and let's work on the transition. So from here, you know, we know we're going to get a ton of, uh, a ton of value out of choosing the main layer and all of its detail layers and just going forward uh, in time here and hitting S and then just scaling these back towards a hundred percent and then choosing all of our other layers and hitting S. And then one by one, we can basically scale and do this, you know, right in the viewport, click this one here. And because it's live, let's just scale it down, change its position and start working on uh, what this third pose could be, which could just be, you know, kind of bringing them back, back down to size and doing some, some interesting overlaps here, right? So now if we grab all of our layers and hit P, hit you actually to bring up everything. We can see, you know, my timing is a little bit tight there, but I just wanted to get the keyframes in. Actually, you know, visually, let's bring this out closer to around four seconds. And, you know, we're gonna have to go about this individually. So first we should look at scale and we're not gonna want this uniformity and we probably already have too much uniformity. And so I'll quickly just try to break up any uniformity I see in my keyframes because something like this I think benefits from just a touch uh, of offset, but here we we can see this really isn't eased enough for for what we want to do. And so here I'm going to say we want this to be way more eased because we want to hold in that center position much longer, and we just want it to be uh, really quick there. And I'm going to ease all of these as well. 
And I'm just gonna quickly scramble a little bit of these end frames here. Uh, and there's scripts and things that do this kind of offsetting that you can go out and buy and check out aescripts.com. But uh, for my money, just kind of doing it manually is is certainly certainly helpful. So we did the scale, right? We did the scale to this third pose, uh, but it, our position kind of kind of falls off a bit. So if we look at everything and we hit P, we need to look at our position parameters here and come back to the graph editor and we can see it's not eased how we want, but let's just use the speed graph and let's make sure that we're holding in that center position much longer and we're matching, yeah, we're matching kind of the speed of the scale animation. So now if we do a quick RAM preview, we'll see kind of in this first pose and then we're gone and we're into a second pose and we can see there's some bumpiness in there and that's where, you know, now going individually into each layer and kind of massaging that out and working that out is how we can create a smooth and graceful animation. And the, the jittering we're seeing is that the, the peak of the position and the peak of the scale aren't matching. So it's like you're seeing the peak of the position and then the peak of the scale. And so literally going into each layer and making sure I align that and ease that out a little bit better. Let's talk about the look. Now let's go ahead and add a new adjustment layer. And we want to create a bit of grain and grit to this scene, because right now it's just perfect vectors and it'd be nice if it had a little bit of, of kind of texture and tactile nature. So here in the adju adjustment layer, uh, I'm gonna come under the effects panel here and under distort, I'm going to come down to a displacement map. And a displacement map is gonna need for us to create a layer that acts as a map uh, for this effect. So we actually need to create a new composition and we're gonna call this noise grain and we're gonna hit okay. Now here we're gonna hit command Y and we'll say noise to, we'll create a new solid, we'll title it noise, we'll come under effect, and we'll go to noise and grain and add fractal noise, which by default is just a static noise image. Uh, but if we animate this evolution by setting a first keyframe, coming to the end here, and then just ramping this you know, way up, now we're gonna get a noise pattern that's animated and we can preview this and see you know, the general speed of this. Now we want a noise pattern that's very, very fine and small. We just want small details. So right now this is way too big and blocky. If we come under transform and we look at scale, let's just take this to 1%. And now what we end up with is a really fine, small grain uh, or noise. And so if we come back to our eye reveal layer and we go to the project panel, Let's go ahead and bring the noise grain into our scene and just turn it off with the eye switch here. And then in the adjustment layer, we have the displacement map already. Let's go to the displacement map layer and choose noise grain. Now we should be able to see that it's using that, that noise that we created, that really fine noise, to actually kind of feather out the edges of all of our, of our 2D art here. And you can see we're getting this kind of edge as well. And it looks quite pixelated here as we zoom in to 800%. Uh, but this is also a really useful way to go about making your shape layer work, have the, you know, the feeling that it was maybe drawn on with something that was uh, like a dry media or even a wet media. So this kind of distortion is, is really common to do with, with shape layers. And if we go back into the noise grain and just for the sake of example, take the scale back up to 100 and we come back here, now we can see we have a really blocky, big wavy noise. We don't have fine details. Uh, now we're just distorting all of it um, at, a much, at a much blockier, larger level, which can also be really cool. Uh, so, but for the purposes of, th of this, I think uh, I like something like even 1% that creates a really, really fine edge and for the most part, uh, kind of preserves the design that we have going here. Thank you.